Today I'm going to be talking about Geographic Information Systems, or GIS, and how the technology is currently being used in conservation efforts around the world. So to start off, what is GIS? Geographic Information Systems is a software program that is used as a tool allowing us as geographers, conservation biologists, along with many other specialists, to organize, manage, present, and analyze spatial data using maps. It has been described as the science of where by ESRI, which is an organization that is worth mentioning because they're currently the largest supplier of GIS software in the world. And I'm going to take you to ESR's website because they have a great display of what a GIS map looks like uh, without actually having the software system, which is one thing that I do not have. So GIS maps are look something like this. And here's a great depiction of kind of all of the steps that they use to analyze data in a spatial manner. So if a field scientist collects data, they then are able to put that data onto a map using different layers. So for example, this first square up here represents one set of data, while the one below it represents another set. Those sets are then placed on top of the same map, making it easier to analyze spatial information on GIS maps. Also on ESRI's website is they have uh, showcases of all of the work or I should say some of the work that they have done, that, have, that has been done using their software systems. So these are a bunch of great examples of ways GIS has been used to um, ultimately analyze and answer some of these questions that have been asked by uh, conservation biologists along with other specialists. So, um, GIS in conservation biology. So I'm going to go through a few examples of GIS being used in by conservation biologists. So this first example is it can be used uh, for habitat geospatial analysis, which has been done in this particular report in the Pacific Northwest to measure tidal changes in an estuary. So what these authors in this report did is they collected data um, of a specific region and that region that we're going to be talking about or that I'm going to be showing you the map of is Grays Harbor. So they've collected data from Grays Harbor um, that is ultimately tidal levels in an estuary and they use the tidal levels in, of 1883 along with the more recent tidal elevation levels and then they've, they've put both of those data into two different layers and then combined those layers onto a GIS map which ended up looking like this. So as you can see, um, by putting those things onto one map, it makes it a lot easier to analyze. And then it, was, it helped this author come to their conclusion that the estuary has uh, severely decreased in recent years, or the levels of that estuary. Uh, another way that GIS can be used in conservation biology is for population distribution. So the example that I outlined here is I did a report earlier in a different class on balsam firs and Isle Royale, um, I could potentially use a GIS map to show trees in different regions of the island and then overlay that with uh, past and current uh, times that the trees have populated different regions. Another way that GIS can be used in conservation biology is to outline habitat use. I have a really unique example here that I'm gonna go to another website called Rainforest Foundation and they have done uh, incredible work using GIS by creating maps, uh, participatory maps, where they work with local people of particularly, particularly um, countries in Africa and help kind of describe the habitat use of different land so that conservation biologists have a better idea of how that land is currently used by people. Um, when they go to create uh, refuges for wildlife and things like that. So there's just a few ways that GIS is used in conservation biology. Um, another way here to show progress of conservation activity um, is a great example that the Virginia's Department of Conservation and Recreation outlines. And they've actually on their website, they have GIS maps available that you can look at the work that has been done so you can see the information kind of overlaying itself. And here you'll get a better understanding of what layers on a GIS map actually look like. 
So here is a map of Virginia. And on this website here, you can look at, for example, if I highlight this layer of managed conservation lands, then it will appear on this map here. And so this is why GIS is an incredible program is because you can have a map and you can select different layers and you can take away different layers and it gives you a better visualization of the region um, from an overall, from a stand back point. You can outline different boundaries such as counties. You can look at trails in different counties. Um, so that is another way that GIS is used in conservation biology. Um, by Virginia's DCR. Um, and another way is you can look at regional biodiversity currently and in the past, which um, my example would be, uh, since I'm interested in freshwater mussel populations in Midwest waterways, it would be incredible to create a GIS map where you can show those things. Um, so to go off now to the advantages overall of this technology. So GIS allows visual and interactive mapping to aid in analysis of past versus present actions. I think this is one of its strongest suits. So instead of putting maps side by side to each other, uh, we can combine those maps into different layers and then have it on one spatial area that we can see and ultimately analyze easier. Another advantage is it has the capability to catalog very large amounts of information and then put those in a visual way using maps. Uh, GIS ultimately allows humans to learn more about the planet we live on and the ways in which we can use spatial mapping to preserve and protect it. But of course, with as with all technologies, there are some disadvantages as well. So GIS uh, is an expensive software system, which is one of the reasons why I have not been able to just walk you through a GIS system today, because as a student, um, there are discounts for students and nonprofits and businesses, uh, but it, it's still an expensive program. So because of this, it kind of creates the potential for lack of accessibility um, in different populations, um, which is one thing that I'll be talking about a little bit later in the presentation with that Mapping for Rights organization uh, through the Rainforest Foundation. Another disadvantage of GIS is it increases in error on larger scale maps because the Earth, Earth is not perfectly round and it is creating an overlay um, of a round object because that is what the technology currently knows how to do. So like many technologies, it has the possibility to be used only to fulfill the needs of those with access to it. And um, like all technology also, it has the room for improvement, which is what as humans we like to do with technology is improve it. So here is that link, another link to the Rainforest Foundation's um, Mapping for Rights program. And this is just an article here, but I wanted to outline one of the things that this, what that they are doing is by working with people that actually live in an area. And here's one way in which the technology is being used to overcome the access issue of it being an ex expensive software system. So it is currently um, through the Rainforest Foundation uh, training people in the region, as well as people working with indigenous people in that community to learn how to use the program. So that's one way that the disadvantage of GIS is being um, worked with and trying you know, to move around. And then watershed boundary mapping is an awesome way that, US, that GIS maps can be looked at by you at home. So USGS, USGS has uh, GIS maps on their website that you can go to and you can look at the region that you live in um, and then look at the different layers of the map, which is an awesome resource for any of us to have at home. Like for me, for example, I'm very interested in, in watersheds. So this is a great resource for me um, that I have actually used on several projects so far. So there's um, a couple of the links that I wanted to share with you. And here's the literature that I have cited um, by researching different GIS uses in conservation biology. And I hope you all learned a little something about the program GIS and how it can be used um, in our field of study.